This is a very basic structure for an NPV problem. Um, in this framework, we can see a number of other structures uh, for cash flows. So let me just go ahead and uh, I'll, I'll play with uh, some of those structures that we might see. One potential structure might involve a zero at some point. So maybe at time two, for example. So say time two is zero. And so how would we modify? Well, we just need to make sure that we keep that zero inserted. We're still going to have four periods, but the cash flows are 226, 278, and 331. Just make sure that zero is uh, there and our math will be correct. An alternative setup might be uh, a perpetuity. So let's say that instead of this, we have a perpetuity. So if we've got some consistent cash flow C, then uh, we have a perpetuity. And so we know that the present value of all of this is just C over R. So we're going to use that uh, form that we've used. Might also have an annuity. So if we have an annuity, we've got something that stops at some point, right? There's a hard stop at the finite number. And so this part of the problem would just be the present value of the annuity. And so that's just going to be C times an annuity factor with the appropriate exponent. And we're done there. Now, of course, we get a little more fancy here and uh, put some space in here between time zero and whenever the first thing starts. So we could have a delayed annuity or a delayed perpetuity. And if that's the case, then we're just going to have to add uh, a little bit extra in here where we um, go ahead and adjust for however long this thing is delayed. Right, and so you'll see that on a case by case basis. So in all of these, um, I'm including some notes um, at uh, the bottom that will uh, take you to videos of me working through these various uh, other mechanical situations like a perpetuity, an annuity, a delayed perpetuity, or a delayed annuity.